What's up guys, last night I was just kind of like thumbing through the app store on my phone, looking for anything new and fresh in video, and I just saw a lot of the same stuff over and over, and then this caught my eye. It's a video editing app, but what's amazing about it is it lets you composite different shots on top of each other, just like a real desktop editing software. I've reviewed like a fair amount of apps on this channel and I've never seen anything like that. So we are going to check it out. Looking at these demos, these, these samples look amazing, almost too good to be true. To be honest, I kind of have a hard time believing that like they actually composited these really cool surreal looking shots in the app and not in another software. So we're gonna try it out together today. I did play around a little bit with it last night just so I could kind of speak intelligently to you about this app, but I really haven't played around with it too much. So we're gonna give it a go. And full disclosure, this video is not sponsored. I don't have an affiliate link. I don't have a discount code for you guys. I paid for this with my own money and it's not cheap. You can buy the yearly subscription for I think it's like 30, $6.99, $35.99, somewhere in there. Um, you can go month to month for about $8 a month. You can buy it outright for about $70, which sounds like a good deal until you get in there and like every little upgrade is an in-app purchase. So the cost just kind of like keeps going up and up. But in all fairness, it does do something different. So, you know, and they have to make money, so it's fine. But I just want to let you know, it's not like InShot or Splice where you can do a lot for free. Now, when I played around with this app last night, I did notice that to really utilize the compositing features to their maximum capacity, in all of the demos, they seem to be using shots that were shot over a solid background. So we're gonna be playing with a few different shots today that I shot myself. One's gonna be over a green screen, one is gonna be over a white backdrop, and the other one is gonna be shot over that white backdrop, but in silhouette. Just like with any other editing app, you could just drag and drop clips into your timeline, you can trim them, add transitions between them, add text over them, add filters. I mean, it does kind of pretty much everything that most other of these editing apps do. So I'm not gonna go through all of those things today. I really just wanna focus on that compositing feature. All right, so we're gonna start a new project. You're gonna wanna hit the plus sign to add a new clip. Now remember, you're gonna wanna pick your background shot first. And what's really interesting about Video Leap is that you have the option to either go into your own camera roll, but you also have a selection of stock shots that you can use in your videos, which is great. Now it defaults here, if you look at the top of the screen, to Getty Images, and all of these shots are premium. So you actually have to pay for these shots if you decide you like them in your video and you want to export your video when you're done editing. But if you click on over to Pixabay, or Video Leap, these are all free shots, which is great. So let's just stick with this Video Leap library and I am going to pick this cityscape as the backdrop. We're first gonna be playing with a green screen technique. So in order to add a green screen shot over this, I need to click on over at the bottom of the screen to Mixer. And then I'm gonna click on over to Recent. So this is my own camera roll. And you might recognize this shot here. It's me and my dog Bauer over the green screen in our studio. And I shot this for the video where I reviewed the Filto app, which was kind of interesting. So if you wanna check that out, I will link to it here. So now what you can see is that that green screen shot is smaller and laid on top of that cityscape background. So what I wanna do is take my two fingers and expand the shot of me so it fills the entire frame over the cityscape. And now we're going to mix these together. So there's a few different ways you can do that. For this particular trick, we're gonna do the chroma feature, which is designed for like a chroma key. And it defaults to the color picker tool. So what I'm gonna do is grab a part of the green frame to select the green and stretch my finger out and just kind of play with this to try to get a great looking key. Let's see. It's not really looking that clean. I'm wondering if we can make some adjustments after the fact, but you can see here, like my dog is disappearing. Oh, all right, so, ooh, where'd it go? That kind of seems to be a little bit of the sweet spot right there. Now you can see here, I've got some other options I can play with. One is intensity. The default is the value of 25. I don't know what that means. 
All right, so if I dial it down, the green comes back. If I dial it up, oh, that's not so bad. And now let's look at that shadow option. What's that gonna do? I'm gonna crank that, oh, okay, so it fills in the darks. Wow, this green is actually pretty good. Let me play it and see how it looks. Now, if I want to move myself around in the frame, I just click that teardrop shape where you see me, and I get that red box around the frame. That kind of tells me where the edges of my frame are. And if you look here on the right, I don't know if you can see that, you can see that there's a little bit of noise from the green screen that didn't quite key out cleanly. So let's see what we can do about that. I'm going to move on over to the masking feature. And what this does is it lets me kind of like crop the sides of my shot so I can crop out that noise. So I'm gonna hit the rectangle and I'm just gonna, with my two fingers, pinch it and scale it up. And so there you go. And now that noise has been removed. I'm gonna say that the green screen feature on this worked shockingly well. I'm really surprised at how clean of a key I could get. Um, you know, I'm looking at this on my phone. Maybe if I had it on a really big screen, I might be able to pick out some noise or some things I didn't like. But for like a mobile editing app where you're probably just gonna be uploading this to social media anyway, people are also gonna be viewing it on their phone. So it probably looks pretty good to them too. So now let's try using something that we shot over a white background and see how that looks. So to start a new project, I'm gonna click this icon at the top left of the screen, new project. And I'm again going to add a stock shot underneath. Let's pick something else. That looks really pretty. And then let's go on over to Mixer, go over to my camera roll and find this shot, which I shot over poor Rob this morning. I pushed him in front of the camera over a white background. And I'm gonna scale him up a little bit, just like I did before. Now let's use a different compositing technique. Let's try the one that says blending. So here there are, you can kind of play with the opacity. So I can bring the opacity down to 50%. So you see 50% of Rob and 50% of the forest background, but there's other ways to blend. So let's just click through all these options because they're gonna give us different looks. Let's hit overlay. That's kind of interesting, very surreal. This to me looks a lot like what we saw in the demos where things were just like very surreal, a whale in the sky, you know, he kind of looks like he's coming from behind the trees. It's kind of interesting. Multiply, screen, soft light. This one looks pretty clean as well. Hard light, darken, color burn, lighten, plus lighter, yowza, that's very bright, and plus darker. I think the best bet on this one is gonna be the overlay. I feel like he really pops on it. And I like it at full opacity, but what I am noticing is that you can see the edge of the white frame on top of the forest background. So what I'm gonna do is, is kind of correct that a little bit. I'm gonna go back, and now let's use that mask filter again. This time, let's use the radial shape, so it's a circle. And I think we can soften, yeah. So if you grab these, these little arrows here, you can soften the edges. So you don't really see that border. So that's kind of a weird look. I mean, I don't know when I would really use that, but you, if you were a really creative person and you were doing something a little more artistic, that's actually a really interesting composition. And what else is interesting about it is that I would say it's really very close to what I saw in the demos from Video Leap, which is amazing to me because I just picked up this app and I feel like I was able to do something really cool really quickly uh, without really knowing how to use it that well. So I would say also, this was pretty good. Now let's try to replicate this look. What you can see here is someone shot in silhouette and then you're filling the dark space with like a really cool animation, crazy uh, color pattern. And let's see if we can replicate that. For this one, I think we're gonna wanna start with the uh, video that we shot on the bottom and then put the cool pattern up top, but I'm not sure. Let's see if we can figure out how they made this. All right, so one more time, we're gonna to go to new project. I'm gonna add a new shot. I'm gonna do this one. So we shot Rob in silhouette. 
and we're gonna go to mixer, of course. We're gonna go to stock, and let's look for like a crazy pattern. Hmm. I just wanna see what they used in those demos. That was really cool. What about like this galaxy thing? Okay, I'm gonna lay this over, and let's see if we can figure out how they did this. I am gonna start, hmm. Blending. Oh, wow. So I hit darken and he showed up, his silhouette showed up over it and the galactic image covered the white backdrop. Maybe I did do this backwards. Wow, that's cool. You know, it's not exactly what I expected to happen when I put this together, but I'm actually getting like really cool stuff out of here. Interesting. So you know what? I'm gonna go back and start a new project and try to do it the opposite way, but this was a good exercise because I feel like I learned a lot and I think this came out, this is like the cleanest looking cutout that I've done. So now let's go back, let's start even a new project. I'm gonna start with the backdrop shot. Where is that galactic? And then we're going to hit the mixer. We're going to add another shot on top. So now we've got the reverse. I'm going to scale it up. We're going to go to blending. And let's see. All right. I think I figured out sort of what's going on here. I'm using the lighten blend mode and I'm not getting like perfect cutout. If I scale up my shot, so I guess like because the background's got a little bit of gradient in it, it's not completely cutting out the way the demo did. But if I scale up his profile, then I'm cutting out a lot of that background noise. So I think the verdict on the demos versus reality with Video Leap is that they probably had really, really perfect lighting and they knew what they needed to do before they created those perfect looking demo videos. But I am kind of a believer that they did use Video Leap to do that because it really worked. And it worked even though I didn't have like perfectly, perfectly white background on my shots. Um, I had a little bit of a gradient, but it still looked amazing even if it wasn't exactly what I saw in the demo. So I gotta give this editor a thumbs up. Now, if you want something that's just more basic, where you're just cutting clips together, maybe adding voiceover or text, then I don't think you need to pay for Video Leap. There are tons of other apps out there that are free or cheaper. One of them I really recommend is called InShot, which I did a review on. I will link to that here. But if you're the kind of person that you want something where you're doing really surreal video effects and you wanna have a lot of fun and creativity with your videos, plus the basic editing features, I do think Video Leap is a big winner thumbs up on this. If there are any other apps in the app store that you think that I'm missing that I should check out, let me know in the comments. I had so much fun working with Video Leap, and I'll see you guys next week.